Peter Boyle from Young Frankenstein. When I hear Frankenstein, I think Halloween, I think the movie. One, one, two, three. The number of the day. The first thing I think of when I think of Dracula is cereal, not chocolate. So no. Is, is why do why do films choose to uh, portray characters like Dracula and other other these these, these monsters, ancient texts? Mm -hmm. Why do they choose to portray them in a in a sympathetic or more positive light? Oh, oh you can't be serious. <sighs> I'm a I. Oh my God. Woof. <sighs> I'm, I'm, I'm engaged, and, and once he took, but, but I didn't, it was never a time, all the, uh, oh my, uh, uh. The originals are pretty negative, pretty much all bad. I would say that there are two reasons that come into play here. First, you have the idea that people are less superstitious they were, as they were in olden days when classic literature like Frankenstein came so out. So people just don't believe in scary monsters as much like that anymore. You stay. We belong dead. And the second factor is political correctness. Oh God. Carlisle? When you have vampires in the Twilight series, um, who are benevolent and try to control their urges for blood and try not to hurt anybody. It just seems like it's political correctness affecting the characters. And making that character more, uh, more engaging, uh, less, uh, less clear what their, what their motives are. Uh, it increases the, uh, the, the, the draw of the film, I think, the, the interest of the audience. We're interested in seeing the sort of str struggles, that, the struggle within, and those kinds of dynamics. There is no life in this body. What do you want? To exist. You know, with Frankenstein, we have Dr. Frankenstein, then we have the creature. What the, what the movies have repeatedly gotten wrong is to oversimplify who the creature is. The novel surprises people by showing how the creature is more human than the doctor who made him. That, you know, the, the creature is born with the needs that every baby has, which is to feel socialized, to have shelter and food and a sense of, of uh, parenting. We get the sense that it's Frankenstein misreading who the creature is. The creature seems to understand himself very well. So I think it's interesting for people who have looked at, say, the Boris Karloff version of Frankenstein from 1931 and see it just as this zombie who barely has any words and has a bolt in his neck. Um, it's interesting to go back and read the book and to see how the most enlightened and human creature in the novel is the creature itself and that Frankenstein is the villain. Maybe that's the, where the reversal happens, that the doctor is seen as the tragic figure in a lot of the movies when I think any fair reading of the novel will show the doctor as a very psychologically complex figure who is the author of the evil in, in the novel. It, it creates something that speaks to a more contemporary audience, I think, by doing it, uh, by, by, by portraying them in that way in film.